Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Hogan's Alley. In the previous edition, we had talked about Ben Hogan's thoughts on the waggle. We also talked about John Schlee's thoughts on the waggle, or what he termed the preview takeaway. He talked about how he previewed the takeaway, not just with his hands in the waggle, but also with his body, previewing how the body was going to get to impact. And it was a slow motion exercise, but it was also part of the overall fundamentals of maximum golf. Now, in this edition, we're going to look at what triggers the backswing. Is it something different than the waggle? What happens after the waggle? What happens after the preview takeaway? What do you do to start the backswing? What do you use as the trigger? And also, what can you use as the trigger? Can I use something other than my hands to trigger the backswing? Also, what we're going to look into is if you do use something other than the hands, what are the pitfalls? What is it that can go wrong if you use something other than your hands? Okay, so going back to uh, Hogan's Five Fundamentals, Hogan doesn't really talk about a trigger, doesn't talk about anything really after the, um, the waggle. He uses the waggle as a form of getting ready for the backswing, and then once he's ready, the backswing just starts. Okay, but in John Schlee's Maximum Golf, he talks about the preview takeaway, and then, very interesting, he defines what he calls the turning press. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at that right now because it's essential to understand a lot of what's going on in the golf swing at the time of impact, and I think John zeroes in on it with the turning press. So let's go take a look at what the turning press is right now. Okay, in Maximum Golf on page 59, what John has said after the preview takeaway, what he has is rule number five of that particular fundamental was let your club head gently release behind the ball, which means you're just, after the preview takeaway, you're going to put the club down behind the ball. So, up in the middle of page 59, the turning press completes the impact address position. So, after getting set up and using the preview takeaway, we come to the turning press. Now, as you release the club behind the ball, you then take, you then let a turning press culminate the impact address position and trigger, notice it says trigger, the start of the back turn. The rules of the turning press are as follows. Mainly, rule number one, with your left knee and your left hip, you turn your weight onto your left foot, the turning point of your swing, until the right heel comes off the ground and your right knee is pointing at the ball. This like John says, completes the impact address position. This completes what your mind wants to see at impact. It completes that feeling. Rule number two is just that you allow your eyes to gaze in the direction of the ball, which is where you're gazing towards because that's where you're looking at impact, but your mind's eye is on the target. Remember, you have to keep your mind on the target. That is the ultimate goal. That's where you want to put the ball. That's where you want to strike the ball toward. That's where you want to have the dream finish, where the ball finishes in the hole. So, if you're going to try a turning press, make sure you do it properly because that is what your mind will try to achieve. So, in understanding a little bit more about maximum golf, what you have to understand is the whole leading up, all the fundamentals and principles of maximum golf lead up to the impact address position. And what we have come to right now is the final part of that impact address position, which 
stems from the preview takeaway and goes right into the turning press, okay? Now remember, what we just learned about the turning press is that once you are all set up, you turn the left hip and the left knee until your weight is going on the outside of the left foot until the right knee points at the ball and the right heel is off the ground. Now remember, if you turn your hips properly, the left hip will turn the right hip and the hips will turn the knees. So when you do it properly, it looks like that. The weight goes from being on the left foot to being on the outside of the left foot and the hips turn, nothing happens in the upper body. Notice that, nothing happens in the upper body. So when John says to release the club down behind the ball after the preview takeaway, once you're in this position, it's only the lower body that moves. The lower body turns and this gives your mind a snapshot of where your lower body wants to be at impact. The lower body is leading the upper body through the impact area. It gives you an opportunity to feel that, to see that as, as you're doing a nice slow motion. Now, you can use this on the golf course, you can use it as a practice tool, but it is so important for you to understand that this is what you want your body to look like at impact especially the lower body. You want the lower body to participate. You want the lower body to be out in front of the upper body. So, whether or not you use it on the golf course or on the practice tee, it's something that, if you understand, can help your golf game immensely. All right? Now, so in the turning press, like I said, the whole idea is to make sure that the left hip and left knee turn, right knee, right hip, right heel will be off the ground. Okay? And this involves the turning point. We'll get into the turning point a little bit later. But what we want you to understand right now is that can be a trigger. Okay? That can be the trigger of your golf swing. You can use that as a trigger. You can use the movement of just the right knee as a trigger, getting the feeling that the right heel comes off the ground as you're going through to the impact area. Most people, even to this day, and you might see a lot of touring pros do it as well, is more of a, a forward press just with the hands. They keep the body real still and right before they swing, they'll, forward, they'll press their hands forward. Um, Phil Mickelson does this. You'll, you can see it very clearly in his short game. He'll do it in his short game. He'll do it in his putting. But it's a very deliberate move. It's more of a, it's, it's not a quick jerk right before he takes it back. It's a slow, deliberate move. Now it's something that you need to practice. It's something that will help you with your tempo as well. But if you want to use a forward press, go right ahead. Just try and make it more of a deliberate motion. Don't make it more of a jerk because you don't want your backswing to feel herky-jerky or moving in a, in a wrong direction. <clears throat> now, remember I said if you want to use something other than the hands, there could be pitfalls. One of the biggest pitfalls is this. Let's backtrack just a minute. And remember that in the golf swing, the chain action that Hogan talked about is the hands, arms, shoulders going back. They start the backswing. The hands start a split second before the shoulders do. The shoulders are bringing the arms around. The arms are then, uh, or the shoulders are then bringing the hips involved. Okay? That is the chain action. Hands, arms, shoulders, hips, knees on the backswing. 
okay? If you use a turning press or if you use the right knee, do not, I repeat, do not get the feeling that the lower body starts the back swing. Too many people I have had come to me and say, it didn't work, it, it, it kind of messed me up. And maybe because they didn't understand that once you use the turning press or a right knee in to start the backswing, it comes back and then the lower body stops until the upper body brings it to a winding sensation to give you that opportunity for the tension in the swing. Okay? So, don't do a turning press and then and then all of a sudden your legs are starting back and your legs are, are already involved with the backswing and your hands are just past your right knee. That, it'll throw your timing off. It'll throw that chain action off. Okay? So be careful of that. Remember, making sure whatever trigger you pick that it does not disrupt that chain action in the golf swing. Make sure that you understand that, okay? So play around with this. Play around with all the, uh, the opportunities to, um, to see what happens when you trigger your swing. And um, I will see you next time.